Hi, Mystery Recapped here. Today, I am going to explain episodes 1 and 2 of a Thai television series called Bad Genius. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The first scene shows us the final round of a junior high school Scrabble competition. A girl named Lin is competing against Sorowis from a rival school. Lin's father, Veet, and the school's principal of a prestigious school are in the audience watching the game. The principal promises to admit Lin to her school with a full scholarship if she wins the match. Her competitor, Sorowis, seems to be struggling in the last round, so he deliberately drops an eraser. His mentor picks it up and gives it back to him. Lin notices that the man changes the eraser with one that has the answers written on it. She catches Sorowis cheating and quietly calls him out for it, but doesn't tell the judges. For her final word, she writes cheater and wins the match. The crowd applauds and cheers, and Lin is given certificates of honor. During dinner at night, her father, Veet, asks her if she likes her new school. Lin boasts about the computers, rooms with AC, and the library of the school. She adds that her favorite place is the music room that has a grand piano, which she can play during lunch. Veet inquires if she made any friends, and Lin awkwardly says she has. One day, while playing piano in school, Lin is approached by her classmate named Grace. She asks for Lin's help to practice a song for the school play. Lin plays the piano while Grace sings, but they stop when Grace is off-key on certain parts. She is sad because she might not get a role in the play, and claims that it is her dream to be in one. Lin then asks her to listen to the keys carefully and go along with them. After a little practice, Grace gets the key right and is overjoyed. Before Lin leaves, Grace asks her to wait for her outside the music room so they can meet after her audition. The audition goes great, but Grace comes out of the room with teary eyes. It turns out that according to the new rule, students who want to be in the school play must have a GPA above 3.25. When Grace complains that she has never had a GPA that high, Lin offers to tutor her. For the next few days, they study together in the library. Their math teacher, Sofon, tutors students outside of school. One day, Grace, who is also in his private class, brings a sample question paper that Sofon has provided. Lin notices the questions are more difficult than the ones he teaches in class, but practices them anyway. A few weeks later, they are in their midterm math exam. For the first few minutes, Lin answers all the questions with no difficulty, but then she notices most of the questions are identical to the practice questions that Grace had. It is clear to Lin that Sofon had been providing test questions to the students who pay him for coaching outside school. She writes all the answers on an eraser, puts it inside her shoe, and kicks it back to Grace's desk. Grace gets the answers and copies them all down. When the results are out, Grace is overjoyed to get the highest marks she ever has. But since the girls score the same, Sofon is suspicious of them. He warns the girls to be careful, because if he finds them cheating, he will not go easy on them. After he leaves, Grace invites Lin for dinner at her boyfriend Pat's house. In the evening, they go to meet Pat in a lavish restaurant right next to his apartment. He turns out to be a wealthy kid who is lazy and gets bad grades. After he treats the girls to dinner, he asks Lin to help him in the exam, just as she did with Grace. The girls are surprised when Pat offers Lin a lot of money to help him. His father has promised to buy him a sports car if he doesn't fail, hence he desperately needs her help. However, Lin doesn't want to risk getting caught, so she rejects the offer. She returns home at night to her father Veet eating noodles. Lin asks him to be more careful with his diet and goes to her room. A while later, she hears him talk to someone on the phone about a loan. Lin confronts him about this and finds out that he has borrowed money from his brother to pay for Lin's tuition. The principal promised to provide her full scholarship if she wins the Scrabble contest, but because of a budget issue, Lin and a guy from her school have to share the scholarship, meaning they will still have to pay half of the fee each semester. Lin knows that her father cannot afford such prices and says she will transfer back to her old school, but Veet insists she will get more opportunities in this new one. Now, to get a full scholarship, Lin will have to compete with the other guy and prove she is better. The following day at school, Lin sees a little kid trying hard to get a balloon on the ceiling. She tries to help him but cannot reach it. Just then, a guy named Bank arrives and helps them. The kids call them a nice couple, making the two of them flustered. After the kid walks away, Lin introduces herself and finds out Bank is actually the guy she is sharing her scholarship with. She asks him if they can still be friends, but Bank rejects her, saying that they are competitors. In the following scene, Lin is back at Pat's apartment building. 
To pay for her father's loans and her tuition fee, she finally agrees to help him and Grace cheat in the exam. Her condition is that the couple will only get three-fourths of the answers, so their teacher won't suspect them. Pat accepts the deal. The following scene is their final exam of the first semester, and Lynn has to help both Grace and Pat alongside completing the test herself. Like earlier, she starts writing on an eraser, but stops when Sofon walks towards her. He keeps an eye on her throughout the exam and eventually notices her writing on the eraser. The man snatches the eraser and is surprised to see your slipping exam papers to students written on it. He realizes she knows his secret and tries to reason with her, but Lynn hands him her answer sheet and walks out of the classroom. Sofon asks the others to continue and follows Lynn. Lynn remains adamant about telling the principal as Sofon tries to convince her otherwise. He even threatens to tell the principal that she let Grace cheat from her paper. But Lynn fires back, saying that Grace got good grades because of his tuition classes. As she walks away, Sofon notices her hand is inside her pocket and asks her if she is recording their conversation. When she brings her phone out, it is revealed she has been on a call with the principal this whole time. A distressed Sofon heads back to the classroom as the students get out. Grace and Pat thank Lynn as everything went according to their plan. It turns out that they had planned the whole scenario beforehand. Because of Sofon's tuition papers, Lynn could complete her paper in just a few minutes. She also marked the answers on her question paper and asked Grace to exchange it with hers while she distracts Sofon. After that, Grace wrote the answers on an eraser and gave them to Pat, and all three of them did great on the exam. Moreover, Lynn had changed Pat's name on her phone to the principal's. That way, she wouldn't get Sofon kicked out, but still intimidate him. However, later at night, she gets numerous messages on a group chat saying that Sofon has been fired from the school. Lynn rushes to Pat's apartment again and asks him how did the principal know. Pat replies that he had recorded the phone call and sent it to the real principal because he believed Sofon could create trouble for them in the future. Lynn isn't happy about the move, but dismisses the matter. The next day at school, she again meets the same kid and finds out he is Sofon's son who has been kicked out of the school because of his father's deeds. Lynn guiltily watches them go down the elevator. In the following scene, we are taken to Banks' laundry shop. He lives with his single mother, who is obsessed with lottery tickets. She has severe back problems, but because of their financial condition, they cannot afford to get it treated. Later in school, Bank and Lynn are called by the principal because she wants them to take part in a TV show quiz competition. Neither of them are willing to partner up, but the principal convinces them by declaring that this competition will decide who is going to get the next term scholarship among the two. Hence, even if they are partnered, the one who gives the most answers will get the scholarship. The very next day, they are on the set of the reality show. The quiz starts, and Bank gives the first right answer, followed by Lynn. The duo leads by two points, but is soon overtaken when Bank hastily says the wrong answer. Lynn suggests that he think and discuss with her before throwing random answers. If they go against each other, they might lose the quiz. So, for the last question, they discuss the answer. The other team answers first, but gets the answer wrong. At last, Lynn cites the right one and wins the competition. The following day, they are at the principal's office, where she tells them that Lynn has won a full scholarship. She asks Bank to apply for a scholarship again next semester and dismisses them. After the meeting, Lynn tries to comfort Bank, but he ignores her. Later, we see him take his mother to a government hospital where they have to wait for hours for her turn. He also tells her that he didn't get the scholarship, but the mother quickly hides her disappointment and assures him she will collect the money before the next semester. One day at school, Pat calls Lynn into the computer lab and asks her if she will stop helping him cheat now that she doesn't have to pay for tuition. He laughs at her when the girl says she doesn't need his money anymore. According to Pat, the school will still take fees for extracurricular activities that she probably doesn't know about. Lynn doesn't react, but realizes he might be telling the truth. So, when she returns home, she goes through her father's drawer and sees that he has paid the school a total of 200,000 baht as a maintenance fee. This makes her realize that full scholarship is just a publicity stunt for the school, and they still make money from all their students. Lynn quickly calls Pat and asks if there are more people willing to pay her like him. The following day, Pat arranges a meeting with Lynn, Grace, and his rich friends who all need Lynn's help. She asks all of them for 30,000 baht to help them cheat for one semester. They will have to pay Pat who will in turn give the money to Lynn so there is no proof of payment. But since there are many people, passing answers on erasers would be too risky. Hence, Lynn comes out with another plan. 
She remembers there is a clock on the front wall that is visible to everyone. She declares that the minute hand on the wall is the number of the question they are on. Similarly, since the questions are multiple choice, they will have four options. The second hand on the clock will be the answer. So, if the answer is letter A, Lynn will raise her hand when the second hand reaches 1. If the answer is B, she will raise her hand when it reaches 2, and so on. The exam will be held for two hours and there will be 60 questions in total, which means Lynn will have to complete hers in an hour and dedicate the next hour to help the others. The test goes exactly as they had planned. But midway, Bank, who is sitting right next to Lynn, asks her to stop moving so much because he cannot concentrate. Suddenly, he drops a piece of paper on the floor that the teacher sees. She takes the paper from him, believing it is a cheat, but it turns out to be the list of customers' addresses from his laundry. She then urges him to bring everything out of his pockets, but a tired bank accidentally pukes on his paper. Everyone in the class laughs at him as he rushes to the washroom. In the evening, Lynn goes to Banks' home, telling him that she doesn't need the scholarship anymore, so she is giving it back to him. A surprised bank asks her why, but Lynn hides the fact that she earned enough money from helping her friends cheat. Instead, she says that her father won the lottery. Bank happily offers to do her laundry for free as a thank you gift. He then tags along to take her home by bus. The episode ends as he says he wants to be friends with Lynn. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.